In this episode, we're going to give you a few tips on how to tell if a property is A grade and how to identify a B or C grade property. Welcome to your first home buyer guide, the podcast for first home buyers who want to get it right. I'm Megan and that was Veronica. We're both buyers agents and probably old enough to be your mums. But that's a good thing because between us, we've got over 40 years experience and we are going to share with you bucket loads of stories about avoidable mistakes. Together, we're going to make sure that you get unbiased and real information that you can rely on so you can get where you want to be without missing a step. Now, we've got loads of great tips for you in this episode. And if you'd like more useful tools, head over to the website, homebuyeracademy.com.au. There you'll find free checklists that you can download, a free mini course on how to price a property and our where to buy a workshop for only $39. Priceless stuff, really. Bargain. But before we get into the interesting stuff in this week's episode, here's the boring bit, the disclaimer. You of course know that nothing in this podcast is to be taken as personal advice. We always recommend getting the advice of an expert in their field of expertise. Now we've done our very best to ensure that the content is correct at the time of recording, but things change. So check with the relevant government authority or your advisors to get the most up-to-date information. Today, we're talking about different levels of quality, whether it's A grade, B grade, and kind of the rest, uh, (laughs) because we don't want you buying a C grade property. Mm -hmm. It's really quite important to understand what makes some properties grow at a stronger rate than others so so that you don't end up owning an underperformer. But before we get to that, what's your special house this week, Megan? Uh, And once again, for anyone who... (laughs) doesn't watch us they listen to us megan goes on the hunt every week for some crazy out there home and today i think she's absolutely exceeded oh do you like this one uh, this one reminds me out for, there. For, anyone, for anyone who's a parent this one reminds me of king julian out of madagascar uh it is an old i believe it's an old boeing 737 um might have the numbers wrong there but it they've created a home out of it so they've pretty much crashed it into the side of um the earth and then <laughs> turned it into a home and I love it I absolutely love it it's even red it <laughs> looks like it's sort of reversed into a mountain it does <laughs> and it's got this it's kind of sticking out well it's almost like a house has been built into the side of it it's got this sort of yeah. awning and a veranda it's pretty cool right in the jungle it's of all the ones it's in Costa Rica it- so oh, it's even quite, you know, a bit quite funky. a cool location. <laughs> and it's, you know what, it actually has, uh, it's very appropriate for today's topic because we're talking A grade, B grade, C grade property. And in my business, we call these flyers, floaters or flops. So here we are. We're looking at a flyer. I did not even make that connection, Veronica. Wow. That's... <laughs> I'm not really sure, though. We really are on the same wavelength. We, we are so synergistic. <laughs> but I'm not really sure, to be quite frank, whether that property, that house, would qualify as a flyer. Because the flyer I'm talking about would actually take off, not be stuck into a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> So All right, well, let's talk about what A grade is. And you call them flyers in your business. I love that. It's a great analogy. Um, you know, the, the basic premise of really good quality property is that there's some scarcity to it. It can't be easily reproduced. You know, it's it's kind of got that future owner-occupier appeal. There's no major objections around it that can't be overcome with a bit of money or, you know, some improvements, whether they be cosmetic or minor structural um, the, the things you know they're, they're not on main roads they're they're in nice residential areas with character residences around them you know there's there's some scarcity to them you can't you can't reproduce them easily so here's the thing right when I was a sales agent you you know when you turned up to do a listing appointment or, or an appraisal on a property and you you drive up and you pull up out the front if it's a house and you just go, and I used to liken it to the Wheel of Fortune. You know that old show, that game show, and there's that big wheel and you tug the wheel and it goes click, 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 
click and you've got the different wedges and it could go bankrupt or it could go you win a thousand dollars or you get a coffee machine or something like that right and so it's like driving down the streets like driving along the edge of the wheel of fortune and you go tick 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 and you think please please let it be that house that's a really nice house you know and sometimes you'd go and you tick over the next one it's like Oh, yuck, you got that dog of a one. Anyway, so I, I sold some crap properties when I was a sales agent and I sold some that was amazing. Your job. That was my job. you got to sell them, yeah. right? Yeah. And the thing that I'm talking about here is that instinctively I knew which properties were going to fly out the door. That's the flyer. They're going to fly out the door because every buyer in this area wants that property. Mm. People will push themselves. They stretch themselves. This is what they've been waiting for. They'll compete for that type of property. So, and every suburb has a different, there's slightly different nuances as to what makes an A-grade property in different suburbs. So it's all about the local buyer pool and understanding what's really attractive and appealing to the local buyers. And, and it doesn't have to be a house. It can, can be an apartment, apartment townhouse. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So, and like in, in an apartment building, the, the analogy rather than the street and trying to get the best house in the street would be, in the apartment building, you're thinking, okay, what's the best apartment in the building? And it's not always the penthouse. It could be the really mm. well-proportioned, lovely two-bedder that's on the northern side that has the outlook over the park and is away from the road noise. Yeah. You know, it could be that one. And it, it's it's about getting that promise. So when, you, when Megan talks about scarcity, it's not about, oh, it's really unique because, you know, there's not many houses like that look like planes in the jungle. That's scarce, but <laughs> scarce. And a very and small buyer pool who will that's want to exactly, live in it too. <laughs> that's exactly right. Scarce Hard to and price. highly Hard to do desirable. Hard sales on this one. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so scarce and highly desirable is the combination that you're after. And they, they're what we call flyers because they absolute, even in a slow market, that's the property that will get people competing in a slow market. And so ultimately that's the, the litmus test for me. It's I'm putting my old sales agent's hat on and I'm thinking if I was a sales agent and I turned up to this as an appraisal, would I be excited or would I be thinking, oh, it's got a lot of work involved in getting this one off the ground? <laughs> and I guess it's thinking about when buyers do the drive-by as well because a lot of people before they go to an open house or a first inspection, they'll do a drive-by. Mm. And if it's, you know, if it's amongst rundown um, public housing, perhaps um, it's the best house in a really awful street um, or there's lots and lots of big apartment complexes all around a really nice apartment complex, that drive-by test is also a really good one because if you're, if you're sort of coming up to it and going, oh, which one is it? Oh, I don't like this street. I don't like the way it feels. Yeah. I don't like the neighbourhood. I don't like the other houses. Oh, I don't like that car that's on fire down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you just you be careful of these things. <laughs> just. But <laughs> I think what, what is important is that in, in a seller's market, such as we have now, buyers get FOMO and they mm. will overlook a lot of stuff that they will not overlook when it, when the market slows down. And that stuff, the stuff that will not get overlooked is, and if you're only buying now and you're not really aware of what can happen, and this is what happens to buyers, they, they only buy in the market <laughs> that they're buying in, right? They don't understand that it is cyclical. It's going to cycle never, again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. I know the sorts of things that, buyers will get super fussy about. There's actually a quote in, in the Herald on the other weekend that was, you know, in the story about auction clearance rates in Sydney. And there was a quote from an agent basically, well, buyers, all the things they'd normally be picky on, they're not be picky on at the moment. Right. And, and that's very telling that an agent says that. And so what yeah. we're talking about with A-grade properties or flyers, uh, really, if you're being super picky, it's got very few faults, very few or or faults, Veronica, that can be overcome. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like, you know. Um, you don't like the kitchen. Yeah. But that. it's in a good place and it's a good size and with a little bit of rejigging, it can be fixed. Or you don't or like the carbon. Yeah. Or, um, and this is a house I remember seeing this years ago and I said to these clients, they didn't buy it. You could, the back, the house over the back fence really stared straight in. And I'm right. like, that's a massive, privacy is a big issue. Privacy, yeah, noise, yeah, light, yeah. all those sorts of things, outlook, you know. Airflow. Air, yeah. And so mm. I looked out 
and it was really unattractive having these massive big sort of fishbowl window staring in at you. And I said, but you know what, if you planted, um, you know, maybe some cypress pines or some bamboo or big lily pilly hedge or something, you'll block that. And no one will know it's even there. They, they couldn't mm-hmm. see it. They didn't buy it. About, I don't know, six, seven years later, I went, that house was back on the market and those people had done that. It was amazing. Yeah. No one would know. <laughs> so they created Nobody. their privacy screen. Absolutely. They yeah. turned that house, that house would have been a B, maybe even C because of that issue. Right. And they turned it into an A by planting something. Good lesson. Yeah. And, and having someone who can see that vision. And of course, you, you, you can't do that everywhere because if you mm. haven't got the depth of garden to be able to put some decent plantings in yes. or it takes up too much of your outdoor space, then you might actually be cutting a, cutting off your nose to spite your face if you, if, you, if you think that's the solution, but it actually takes more away than you gain. Absolutely. Now, so we talk about flyers. So they're, the, they're those A-grade assets. They're the properties that everybody wants to own you know, and they don't turn over as often, you know, and because people, once they know they've got a good property, they don't want to sell it, you know, whereas yeah. when they've got Usually B's and the neighborhood's C's, nice. yeah, yeah, they're more inclined yeah. to sell it. So yeah. therefore that's another reason that feeds into the scarcity of it. Yeah. And, and we talk about one of our Home Buyer Academy um, buying principles is if it's easy to buy, it's hard, it's going to be hard to sell. Um, and that's because usually there's some objections that can't be overcome. So if it's hard to buy and there are high levels of competition, even in a slow market, then there is a, a reasonable assumption that it's probably one of those sought after properties that may fit into the A grade category. You've got a lot more work to do to make sure that there aren't any hidden issues around mm. that or, or reasons that people are going to run away. But if it is hard to buy, it is probably going to be, you know, I, I would much rather be in an auction in an auction against lots of other people in a rising market or a, a seller's market than at an auction on my own thinking, what do, what does everybody else know that I don't know? Yeah, what have I missed in my assessment of this property that everybody else has seen as an issue? Um, so th- the fact that it's hard to buy in a, a steady or a healthy market, a rising market, is probably an indication that it has got that appeal to people. Although you've got to be very careful because some properties are hard to buy and they're crap. <laughs> so you've got to have your very critical. This is not in and on of itself. Yeah, yeah. No, you've got to have your critical hard goggles on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do the course for God's sake. Um, B grade. Okay, so in my flyer, floater and flop analogy, these are floaters. So they're just basically they'll they'll coast along, they'll do what the market does. If they're not, they're not bad, but they're not great. And they're, you know, if you we look at we talk about median growth rates. Okay. So that's where if in in any particular area you'll have a, a median growth rate. So that means the percentage of growth over a period of time that prices will experience, right? And so because it's a median, 50% of properties will perform above the median and 50% will perform below the median. Now, if you've got a flyer, then you're more likely to perform above the median. So you're going to get growth, capital growth on your property is more likely to be better than the average outperform the average in that area. Mm. Whereas the floater is probably going to just bob along and do what the market does. So that's not a bad thing per se. And sometimes owner occupiers choose a property that's a floater because it does suit their needs, but yes. it may not be 100% A grade. And, and that might be the right decision for them and that's their stage of life. You know, when, when you're not in a capital, capital accumulation phase, you're not looking to leverage your property, you're not, your, your income isn't going to be rising to allow you to upgrade any time in the near future, so you're not using the property as a stepping stone uh, to another property. Mm that might actually be the right set of compromises for you. I guess what we're trying to do is make sure you understand that that property is probably not going to outperform the market. It's probably going to float along with everything else that's kind of average in the the suburb that it's in. And this is really important to understand, particularly if you are thinking about using your first property as a stepping stone. And we do have the stepping stone tutorial available, only $39. What a bargain. Uh, Just get onto the website and you can actually download that. Now, that stepping stone tutorial is all about making sure your first property does some serious heavy lifting to get you leveraged up into your next property and sort of, you know, climbing that property ladder as as quickly as possible to get to your 
ultimate can't afford dream home. your dream home to start, which no. most people can't, you need to, and you want to eventually get to, and you, you think you're, you're going to have the capacity to get there. That's the stepping stone strategy. You've got to make sure each property does the heavy lifting to get you to the next one. Otherwise Absolutely. you'll fight along. And the good property that you want to get to is going to outperform your average property. And the disparity between those two prices, you're not going to be able to get there without actually saving money, getting an inheritance, you know, get maybe getting some bonuses rather than the property having done the work for you. So that's the danger with buying a floater that you you sort of you're in there. And so some people would choose to buy a floater that, you know, that is got an extra bedroom, for instance, and it's in the area they really want to be, mm. right? And the floater might be that it's on a, not a main road, maybe it's on a secondary road. So it's a rat run. You know, it's a local rat run. Buyers will It'll buy cut their... through between two main roads to get between yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And these these rat run roads are okay, but they're B grade. They're not A grade, mm. you know. Mm. Um, it might be that, you know, it's sort of positioned a bit poorly on the block, like it, it might be the house is, you know, there's more front yard than there is backyard. You know, as long as there's enough backyard, it might be okay. But you'd sort of ideally you'd have a house that was better positioned on the block. Mm. But it's not bad, but it's not great. And I think that's the way you sort of look at a floater. It's in a good location. It's not bad, but it's not great. And it's fine. Yep. <laughs> it, and it is the kind of property that if if the market swings around as it will and there are more properties available to purchase than there are purchasers wanting to purchase buy those properties Mm. then they're the ones that will tend to not be the first preference not move as quickly and probably not get a premium price in a slower market yeah and you know like for instance i'll give you another example i guess in say in an apartment building so if you look at those three-story walk-ups you know, mm. those, those the older, older style, 60s, 60s, 70s. 60s, yeah. Yep. And the ground floor apartments, unless they have a courtyard, they're, mm. they're pretty, you know, they're probably the C grades in the block. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm. Um, Even people, in a well-located block. Yeah, people would look at them. And, you know, if it's got the same size balcony as the top floor, for instance, you're going to go, well, I've got nothing extra for being on the ground floor. If you've got mm. a courtyard, that's different. But if you've just got the exactly the same floor plan as something above you, but it's like security, it's not going to be as bright because they don't get as much light lower down, you know, so it's not as bright, not as light, <clears throat> and it's got an issue with security, you'd think that would be a C-grade apartment in that building Mm. and the b grade might be in the middle floor it might be that yeah it's it's lighter it's more secure because it's a little bit higher but your outlook is looking sort of into the apartments next door and Mm. so you could put some nice sheer curtains or whatever and sort of compensate for that or put some nice plants in the on the on the balcony so you can do something to offset that um but but you've still got one above and one below yeah and you're still you know, whereas the top one, yeah, looks mm. over the roofs, has a nice district outlook. Yeah, sure, you've got to climb an extra flight of stairs, but, hey, that's really good for your bum. And, you know, once you're up, up two levels, you might as well go three. But, you know, that's the only downside. The top floor tend to sell for, for higher prices because they're lighter, they're more secure, and they usually got an outlook. Yeah, and so you're going to get a bit of airflow too just because yeah. of the, you know, you're not sort of down in amongst, yeah. So mm. these are sort of like an illustration, illustration of an A, yeah. B and C in the same building. Yep. Now, so, again, that's not a hard and fast rule because as Veronica says, if you've got an exclusive use courtyard that is private and secure, then that may actually outweigh being on mm. the ground floor and actually make it an A grade property as opposed to, um, again, the, the second floor. level yeah. or the top floor if it, if it has a smaller balcony or Absolutely. the light isn't good or the layout's poor or the room sizes aren't as, as functional. So, again, not a hard and fast rule. You've got to look at the entirety of it when you're doing the evaluation of the property. And it's normally the thing that, you know, when we when you do the, if you have done the where to buy workshop, you'll understand the three Ps that Megan mentioned earlier. So we talk about property, the price and the position. The B grade is usually sort of the property you might you might compromise. It's really where you've got to heavily compromise on either position or the property. Um, mm. the, it might be a B-grade location or it might be a B-grade property. So I would always encourage you not to, if you're going to go B-grade property, make sure it's an A-grade location. If you're going to go B-grade location, make sure it's an A-grade property. So that sort of just tries to keep it as um, minimising the bit. damage because mm-hmm. mm. a C-grade is what we call a flop. 
<laughs> Danger Will Robinson. Is that the quote? <laughs> yeah, Danger Will Robinson. That's from the, um, I hated that show. I Lost did in too. Space. <laughs> I can't Awful. remember if that's the quote or not. Oh, annoying. <laughs> but I'm sure there are a lot of people who really quite enjoy that. Yeah, but no one listened to this podcast because they're no, like, so even, even that was an old show when we were kids. <laughs> I think it was in black Let's and white. Grade. Do you remember C black grade. and white television? Yes. <laughs> yes, we had a black and white television. It was a spare television, but it was black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> colour. <laughs> we remember colour. Let's color go C grade. Right. Flop. Flop, flop, flop. Flip flop. Flop, 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 flop away. Yeah. Well, if you have Walk a flop. Walk away. <laughs> yeah. If you have a flop, a flop at all at, at all times, you should avoid having a flop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if, and you, if you do have one in your portfolio get currently, rid of it. get rid of it. Divest. It's opportunity cost. It, there's, yeah. there's nothing good in having an underperforming asset. So we talked about the median before about, you know, a, a floater or the B grade will sort of bob along with whatever mm. else is happening. The A grade will outperform and the C will underperform and that would just drag your fortunes down with it. Yep. This is not a stepping stone strategy. Buying a big house on a main road uh, is not the right compromise if you think you want to do something in the future other than live in that house for a very long time. Ever. But even then, the longer you own an underperformer, the worse off you are because mm. the gap between you and the rest of the market gets bigger over time. So, you know, flops are really bad. They're bad for business. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Okay, so the ma- major issues are generally with location, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's on a main road, backing onto a train line, too, t- too close to commercial. Next uh, to a petrol station. Affected, next to a petrol station, school, all of these sorts of things is major location or, or um, position compromises. Mm. Often they can be ones that are oversupplied. Uh, yeah. And, of course, we talk, uh, you know, all the time about um, investor stock versus investment grade property. And sometimes these sorts of properties are aimed at first home buyers and investors. There is a lot of them to choose from. They're easy to buy and they're hard to sell and there's no secondary market for them. So particularly new properties, new properties that are aimed at investors and um, first home buyers because of the incentives and depreciation and so forth that each one of, each of those parties can access there's no no one to buy them the next time so when you go to sell it there's there's a very limited market for it and therefore there's downward pressure on prices you always have to ask yourself the question would this sell easily in a slow market yeah it's a good question to ask yourself because like you know megan's written the hint the notes avoid 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 (laughs) and absolutely can i say that again avoid 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 avoid. avoid. (laughs) Please don't buy this crap um, because, you know, for a moment, and I know a lot of people, a lot of first-home buyers go, but, 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 you know, we are priced out of the market. We're never going to buy anything. And I can tell you that if you do buy something like this, ultimately it will be a noose around your neck. You mm. will wish you hadn't bought it. And not buying a property and investing in something else is, for me, preferable to buying a property that you lose money on. And it can it can happen. It does happen, and particularly yeah. with these house and land packages and um, cookie cutter apartments. There's so many case studies. In fact, I've been collecting case studies on these. And one of these days, we'll put out a massive post on it or something because it needs. We've over- even had members, students that have done the we course have. that have said, "This isn't my first property, but I made such a mistake on the first one. I want to make sure I get it right this time oh, because I no. went backwards." How amazing yeah. that the resilience in them that they actually dust themselves off and start all over again. And absolutely. You know, just, yep. Yep. We want you not we want you to avoid that happening to you. Mm. So that when we say avoid, 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 that's what we mean. <laughs> Generally, these pro- kinds of properties. So the way you can kind of identify them is you'll you'll, you'll see the objection, you'll know it, mm. um, but they're always easy to buy because there are so many others uh, like them. Mm. Or pe- other people won't touch them. Um, so, you know, as, you, as we've t- spoken about house and land packages where there's lots more land to be released. Um, so you buy the n- nice, new, shiny, um, customised, but really it's the same four bed, two bath, two car as, as every other one. <laughs> feels in new. Subdivision. Feels, feels unique to you. Feels shiny and new. <laughs> yep. uh, and you've got your government incentives because that was to stimulate the um, construction industry uh, but when you go to sell that there's a whole new shiny set of houses that have been released and and that's what all everyone's sort of attracted to and there's there's really not a market for your established older 
somewhat dated property by the time you go to sell it. Yep. Yep. All the new, all the, the next batch of mugs are all going to be sold the new <laughs> lot. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Well, there you go. That's A, B, and C grade properties. Really important uh, for you to understand, you know, the fundamentals here. Um, as Megan said earlier, we want you to make better decisions. I think you said that. And if you didn't, well, we're saying it now. We want you to make really good decisions. <laughs> this is this is a, another lot of information to use when you're thinking about what your compromises are in the position, property and price equation, the where to buy equation. These are the sorts of compromises you really have to challenge yourself on, but also understand where you are in your life cycle, you know, the life phase, how long you're going to be in that property, what are you wanting it to achieve, when are you looking at divesting it, is there yep. going to be a change in your income? There's so many, so many, so many, so many things to think about. This is just purely making sure that your eyes are open to an underperformer versus a plotter or a floater, if you like, um, versus an overperformer or a, a flyer. In this episode, we've covered a very small part of our 10-step online course for first-time buyers. If you would like to learn more about the process and how to buy without making a mistake, then head over to our website, www.homebuyeracademy.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss an episode. And if you like what you've heard today, please give us an iTunes review. Five stars would be wonderful. It will help others find us as well. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this really useful. And if you have, please share the love with others who you know are in the same boat. We'll be back next week with some more priceless stuff.